हेलो एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर नीरज एंड टूडे आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट सम फैक्टर्स दैट अफेक्ट द एंजाइम एक्टिविटी और यू कैन से दैट दीज आर दोज फैक्टर दैट अल्टीमेटली इफेक्ट द रिएक्शन विलॉसिटी सो वट आर दीज फैक्टर्स सो दे आर इंक्लूड फर्स्ट इज द सबस्टेट कॉन्सेंट्रेशन सेकेंड इज एनवायरमेंटल कंडीशन मीन्स एनवायरमेंटल कंडीशन ऑल्सो अफेक्ट द एंजाइम एक्टिविटी देन थर्ड इज को फैक्टर्स एंड को एंजाइम्स and the last one is enzyme inhibitors so these are the factors that ultimately affect the enzyme activity or they may either increase or decrease the reaction velocity so let's discuss them in detail first is the substrate concentration so here this substrate is that molecule which bind to the enzyme and ultimately convert it to product and the reaction velocity or the rate or the velocity of reaction so it is a number of substrate molecule that is converted into product per unit time the unit of its velocity is per that is micromole of product formed per minute so how the substrate concentration affect the enzyme activity so the rate of this reaction it generally increased as the concentration of substrate increased but after certain point the rate of reaction it become constant although the rate of you can say the concentration of substrate substrate increase because as after some time all binding sites of enzyme they get occupied by the substrate so that enzyme is called as saturated enzyme or the saturation value so now the curve which represent the effect of the substrate concentration on enzyme activity or rate of reaction is here so here in the y axis you can see it's a rate of reaction while on the x axis it's the substrate concentration so as in the beginning the concentration of substrate is low in this diagram this yellow model they represent the enzyme molecule while this red triangle these red triangle they represent the substrate molecule so as in the beginning you can see the number of enzymes is more as compared to number of substrate molecules so the reaction rate will increase because they substrate they will bind to the corresponding enzymes active site like you can see in this animation now as with time in the next phase as the substrate concentration increase like here you can now you can see that there is more concentration of substrate which has represented in the form of these red triangles so as the substrate concentration increase so rate of reaction again increase because the enzymes are available for binding to this substrate molecules so as long as as long as enzyme molecules are available so they will bind to substrate and carry out the reaction so you can say the rate of reaction increase but as all of the enzyme molecule they get occupied like here in this figure you can see these are the enzyme molecules and their active site are that's just occupied by these red one substrates so now you can say that this these enzymes are now saturated because their active sites are not available for binding with new substrate molecule so at this stage if you increase the concentration of substrate like this so now you can see the concentration of substrate has been increased but it is not it it cannot find a enzyme to which this substrate can bind so the rate of reaction is now constant so according to this graph as the concentration of substrate increase so the rate of reaction increase but up to a point at which it reach to the maximum velocity which is called as v maximum but after that point if you further increase the concentration so there will be no increase in the rate of reaction why because the enzyme is fully saturated means there is not any free enzyme is available to bind with this substrate molecule so in this way this substrate concentration it affects the enzyme activity or you can say it affects the rate of an enzymatic reaction the second oh, the second condition is that is environmental conditions they also affect the activity of enzyme or rate of reaction of enzyme catalyzed uh, reaction so environmental conditions they include like first is a temperature means temperature also affect the 
enzymes activity how temperature affects the enzyme activity so the rate of enzyme reaction it generally increased as the temperature increase why because increase in temperature just you can say it give sufficient energy to the number of molecules to pass the energy barrier means as the temperature increase so more and more molecules of substrate they get energy and they will pass the energy barrier which is required to proceed the reaction but if further increase in the temperature will be there so the rate of reaction will be you can say decreased why because high temperature just degrade you can say just denature the enzyme because mostly enzymes are protein molecules so as the temperature will increase then this protein molecules they will get denatured so as the enzyme will denature so it will not work so the again this is the graph which represent the effect of this temperature on the rate of reaction so here in this column as the temperature increase initially so it will increase the enzyme activity or rate of reaction but up to certain point which is called as this optimum temperature so as this is optimum temperature is that temperature at which the rate of reaction is maximum but if the temperature is further increase from this optimum temperature so now you can clearly see in the diagram that there is a downfall of the rate of reaction means rate of reaction will uh, you can say it will decrease why because enzyme get denatured so this optimum temperature is that temperature at which the enzyme reaction occurs very fastly or at which the enzyme uh, work with the uh, maximum efficiency you can say maximum activity the temperature at which enzyme show its maximum activity so that temperature is optimum temperature so in this way this temperature also affect the enzyme activity now the next environmental condition is ph so ph also affect the enzyme activity or rate of reaction as the ph because this catalytic process it usually require the enzyme and substrate specific chemical groups in ionized or unionized forms in order to interact like for example the amino group of enzyme to be proteinated form so at alkaline ph this group is deprotonated and the rate of reaction will decrease so just like that of temperature every enzyme has a optimum ph at which it works maximum or it show maximum activity so change or deviation from this ph or you can say this optimum ph will decrease the rate of reaction or enzyme activity so here this is again the curve representing the relationship between the rate of reaction and ph so here this optimum ph is that ph at which the enzyme reaction occur fastest or you can say the enzyme show the maximum activity so any change in ph from this optimum ph will ultimately decrease the rate of reaction as it is clear from this curve now the next factor that affect the enzyme activity or rate of reaction is cofactors and coenzymes so as you know that the enzymes they require certain inorganic or organic compound or molecules for their functioning or activity so they also affect the enzyme activity like some enzyme for example this iron so iron must be present in the quaternary structure of hemoglobin in order to pick up the oxygen means hemoglobin it require iron if iron will not be there so hemoglobin will not work efficiently similarly an example another example is include that hexokinase enzyme so it is a very famous enzyme which is involved in glycolysis pathway and this enzyme it require magnesium that is mg2 positive ions for its activity if magnesium will not be there so in the absence of magnesium ions this hexokinase will not work properly so you can say these cofactors and coenzyme they also limit the enzyme activity next factor that affect the enzyme activity that is enzyme inhibitors so enzyme inhibitors are certain molecules that when they bind to enzyme they just inhibit the enzyme or they just decrease their activity so these enzyme inhibitors are just divided into two broad categories reversible inhibitors and irreversible inhibitors these reversible inhibitors they are further divided into sub categories that is competitive inhibitors non competitive inhibitors and uncompetitive inhibitors so in the next slide i will discuss about these inhibitors 
सो फर्स्ट इन केस ऑफ रिवर्सिबल इनिबिटर्स फर्स्ट इज द कॉम्पिटेटिव इनिबिटर्स और कॉम्पिटेटिव इनहिबिशन सो हेयर दिस इनिबिटर सो दीज आर द दैट मोलिक्यूल विच हैव द सेम स्ट्रक्चर एज दैट ऑफ सबस्ट्रेट सो एज इट स्ट्रक्चर इज सेम टू दैट ऑफ सबस्ट्रेट सो इट विल ऑल्सो बाइंड टू द एक्टिव साइड मीन्स इट विल कंपीट फॉर द एक्टिव साइड एंड इफ इट विल बाइंड टू एक्टिव साइड सो एंजाइम विल बी इनिबिटेड लाइक इन दिस डायग्राम दिस इज अ पार टिपिकल एंजाइम एंड एज द इनिबिटर इट विल बाइंड टू एक्टिव साइड वाई बिकॉज इट स्ट्रक्चर इज सिमिलर टू सबस्ट्रेट सो इट विल बाइंड टू एक्टिव साइड सो दिस दिस वन इज द competitive inhibitor so as it is bind to active side so now active side is not available for substrate so when the substrate will come so this green triangle represent the substrate so it will not able to bind and you can say there will be no reaction so in this way this competitive inhibitors uh, they alter the enzyme activity similarly the second type of inhibitions is non competitive inhibition here that inhibitor it do not bind to the active side but it bind to some other part of enzyme and as the result of binding the you can say the structure of enzyme get altered and the enzyme will not able to convert the substrate into product like for example here again this is an enzyme molecule and this is the active site now here this non competitive inhibitor will bind to some other part here now you can see that this active site is now free but inhibitor is binded to some this another uh, some another part of enzyme and active site is free but as a result of binding of this non competitive inhibitor so there will be the change in conformation or you can say the active site will got altered so now you can see that this is altered active site now if the substrate will come so this green rectangle uh, sorry this green triangle again if it at the substrate so it will not bind as you can see because the active site got altered so in this way this non competitive inhibitor they also limit the activity of enzyme the next one is uncompetitive inhibition here these inhibitor they do not bind to free enzyme molecule but they bind to enzyme substrate complex and then change the enzyme shape which ultimately in turn alter the active site so for this inhibition first of all the enzyme so here again this enzyme molecule and substrate will bind to this enzyme molecule now this is called the enzyme substrate complex so here this inhibitor will now bind to this enzyme substrate complex so this is the uncompetitive inhibitor this one is the uncompetitive inhibitor so as it will bind to enzyme substrate complex so which ultimately now change its shape as the shape of enzyme has been changed so now enzyme is not able to perform its function so you can say it is inhibited so in this way these uncompetitive inhibitor they also affect the enzyme activity and next one irreversible inhibition so that competitive non competitive and uncompetitive inhibitor for the example of uh, were the sub types of reversible inhibition means that can be revert back if you remove the inhibitor so that enzyme will normally return back to its normal function but here in case of irreversible inhibition the inhibition is permanent because that inhibitor it forms a covalent bond with the amino acid present in the enzymes active sites and due to this inhibitor the substrate will not be able to bind to active site of enzyme like again this is enzyme molecule and this is the irreversible inhibitor that bind with enzymes active site and forming the covalent bond so this blue line it represent the covalent bond now you can see the active site is not accessible for the substrate so as the substrate will come so it will not able to bind to active sites so as the substrate will not bind so there will be no product so in this way you can see say that this irreversible inhibitor so they also affect the activity of enzyme so these are the some factors which i just discussed with you so these are the factor which ultimately decide the enzyme activity or that decide the rate of enzymatically catalyzed reaction so that's all for today guys see you in the next video thank you very much